name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So personally, I think these readings today weave perfectly into one another and encapsulate a good bit of our journey of faith. The first reading from the Song of Solomon, uh, from that I want you to take this, that God drastically, desperately, fully wants to be in relationship with you, desires for you to enter into relationship with God. All of the other components, uh, the words of Scripture, the laws, all of those are instruments for that primary purpose, for us to enter into relationship with God, number one. Number two, that by entering into relationship with God, we would leave changed differently, transformed. That our lives would reflect that relationship. And the third one, I think, is related on our understanding of the first two. If we believe in a loving God who whose deepest desire is for us to be in a full relationship uh, with one another. Uh, we believe in that God who calls us to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and our neighbor as ourselves. Then when we turn out to our fellow brothers and sisters, it wouldn't be with judgment or diminishment, but with a desire to build up and to support and to care for. So relationship. God calls us into relationship. That relationship is called to transform us. And in that being transformed, we are called to support and build up the people on the journey with us. Those are the three critical components of our faith, and they're encapsulated in the first three readings that we have today. The first reading, the Song of Solomon. It's great to have a command to love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, but you can't be browbeat into love. You fall in love. And if any of you remember uh, those moments of young love, when you fall so in love with somebody that that's all you can think about, that everything else seems to fade into the background, that you're almost punch drunk with uh, thoughts about this one person, and you would do anything to show them how much you care. Uh, your life is bent towards that person uh, in a way that is so unadulterated and full uh, that it consumes you. That's how God feels about us, and that's how God wants us to feel about God. Uh, and to say uh, the greatest commandment is to love the God with all your heart, mind, and soul doesn't quite bend our hearts the same way as this beautiful image of God calling us like a lover would call another lover into coming away with him. But that is how fully God wants us in relationship with God, to respond to that love that is there for us. And then the second reading, uh, the reading from James, and I think James is one of my favorite books uh, of, of, of Scripture, and uh, they're not quite sure which James it's attributed to, whether it's our James or, or James the Lesser. Uh, probably not written by either of them based on when it was written, uh, but it certainly pays homage to one of the disciples, James. Uh, and it, interestingly, Martin Luther, uh, during the Reformation, uh, uh, somewhat blackballed this uh, particular passage uh, so that it was shelved for a good bit of uh, history, uh, largely because of what the church was going through at the time. Uh, there was such damage done by the idea uh, that love uh, and salvation was earned, that whether it be by indulgences or whether it be by uh, working hard enough, uh, that love could be uh, earned or salvation could be earned. And so, uh, uh, you know, we often push the pendulum a little bit too far when we counter. Um, uh, so James, which talks a lot about the fact that when we are in that kind of relationship, that we would be transformed and that it would show in our works. One of the great passages in James um, that was on the back of one, uh, our shirts for one of our mission teams, um, uh, by our works, we will show you our faith. That's sort of a paraphrase, but it's, uh, it's that our works are a reflection of the fact that we've been transformed uh, by our relationship with God. Um, and the, uh, the passage here uh, in James uh, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. 
uh, that by hearing the words of Scripture, uh, that those instruments would transform our hearts so that we would be out there serving others and that people would know that we were in that relationship, that we had been touched by the love of God by the way that we treat others. Uh, and the litmus test, that if you're wondering what this is supposed to look like, what does it look like when we are doing that? The writer of James says this, it will be reflected in how you take care of the most vulnerable in your community. How do you take care of the widows or the orphans? If you want to know whether you've been transformed by the love of God and whether your actions uh, reflect the kind of love that uh, has met you, uh, that has rushed towards you, it will be reflected in how you care for the least and the lost, the most vulnerable in your society. Transformed. In relationship, transformed by the relationship, and then the gospel. Uh, the gospel is kind of interesting, and there's, if you look at the, uh, the top byline of the gospel, you notice that we've left out a couple of sections uh, essentially, um, the people have noticed, the Pharisees, the teachers, uh, have noticed that Jesus' followers are not following uh, rigidly uh, the, uh, the practices of their tradition, uh, which, by the way, have some benefit. One of the great things uh, that people uh, were in awe from far and wide of the Jewish people were that uh, they seem to not uh, be subject to a lot of uh, the illnesses and, and plagues that were, uh, that were wreaking, wreaking havoc on, on so many others because of all of these uh, practices of washing their pots and pans thoroughly, of washing their hands, of, of, of having very rigid dietary uh, uh, laws. Um, but they noticed that the disciples weren't following them, and they start to diminish and judge the disciples for it. And Jesus said, that's not your job. In fact, if you really want to get into this, uh, you are somewhat uh, uh, guilty of picking and choosing which laws you follow. You have that great commandment uh, to honor your mother and father. Uh, and there was, and this is the part that's sort of left out of the reading today because it gets a little bit long. And he says, we, but you have this practice where if you're giving the portion of money that would take care of your, uh, your parents in their older days uh, uh, when they're dependent on you, if you were giving it to the church, uh, then you're exempt from having to honor, which meant take care of financially and otherwise, uh, your, your, your mother and father. Uh, as long as you're giving it to the church, you can kind of excuse yourself from that responsibility. Um, and Jesus is calling them on that, saying, you know, uh, you hypocrites, you're judging others while you fail to follow the law, that that's not what the law is about anyway. But when we believe truly that first pass, the first piece, that God is deeply in love with us, that God is not a vengeful, angry, judging God, uh, but a, a, a God that loves us, that made us in God's image, that deeply desires us, it changes how we respond, and it changes what our responsibility is. It isn't to cut people down. It isn't to uh, check off boxes of who's following what and who's missed what. It's to build up. It's to support. It's to care for. It's to encourage. It's to help other people find that same love that is relentlessly pursuing them that you have found in your own heart. And that's what it looks like. It looks like following the example of Jesus, of loving, of reaching out, of caring deeply. And so these readings encapsulate it. When we respond to a God who is relentlessly pursuing us, who loves us so much that they would do anything for us. We are transformed by that love. And then we reflect that love in the world. And think about it in terms of the relationship, that, uh, that metaphor uh, that, that, that God uses. We've fallen in love, and everything is driven towards them. But when we get married, when we stand here, we make these vows. We make these vows uh, to conform our lives uh, to what is in our hearts because there'll be moments where we need the discipline, the laws and the scripture, the discipline of loving one another. And we certainly don't empty the dishwasher or take out the trash or cook dinner or bring home flowers in order to make our per partner fall more deeply in love with us or love us in the first place, it is an expression of that love, and it's often a discipline of that love. And in that, we're both transformed. And one of the prayers that we have 
uh, in our marriage liturgy is that our hearts, uh, when we give each other over to one another in marriage, that our hearts might be so full, so transformed, uh, that they would turn out towards others. So we're in relationship. We're transformed by that relationship, and we're turned out in service and care for others. It's the journey of faith. One of the things that I think is critical, because I think it's very true about this congregation, I don't find this to be a judging congregation. But I do find this congregation needs to tell its story out in the world. Some of the work that Randolph is working with so many other peoples to do. Uh, when you survey the average uh, person of a certain age group who is not formed in the church about what they think of the church, what adjectives come to mind when they think of church, at the very top of that list is judgmental, and not too much farther down is hypocrites. I don't think that's true. But I think when we have responded to that relationship with God, when we've been transformed by it, we have the responsibility to not just stay inside these doors, but to walk out and to encourage and to care for and to serve others in such a way that it transforms their impression of the church and their awareness of God's relentless pursuit of them. Amen.